Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how we can take advantage of AI chat GPT to help us in creating power apps and flows. Power apps and flows come equipped with some of the capabilities of chat GPT-3. I will show how you can take advantage of the in product capabilities plus chat GPT and enhance your experience of creating apps and flows. So let's check it out in action. Microsoft and OpenAI have this long-term partnership where all of the chat GPT capabilities will span throughout the M365 ecosystem. With Power Apps, we already have certain AI-powered assistants that can help us in creating apps uses natural language, which leverages a model known as OpenAI ChatGPT3. The AI capabilities are directly baked into the maker experience. For the gallery, we have ideas that will provide us certain examples of what we can do with this gallery control. I can use the search function to search in my data source or leverage the filter function or sort my data. But let's say I have a specific scenario. For my connected SharePoint list, I would like to show all the tasks that are overdue. Filter my list where due date, if that is less than today, AI will generate the filter expression for me. I can select this and click apply. And in one go, AI has applied that filter formula. And here I can see the two tasks that are overdue. I have a label control that shows the due date of the task. Here as well, ideas. If I need text formatting, this will show me the current format of the data in the control. And here AI will suggest specific formats. It's smart enough to understand that I'm dealing with a date column. So it provides me some sample formats that I can select from. I could enter any custom format of my choice. Let's say I'll pick this specific format. It plugs in the expression needed for the label. I will select it and click apply. And in one go, we can see how it's gone ahead and applied that specific formatting to my control. Chat GPT, AI that is trained using a massive data set from the internet. Chat GPT is capable of understanding and responding to natural language inputs. Chat.openai.com and I can sign in using my Microsoft account. What is Power Apps? And it goes ahead and starts explaining what Power Apps is all about. Learning about Canvas Apps. So I'll simply say Canvas Apps. I ask the question, how do I build apps? And it will provide me step-by-step -step guidance as to the steps that I need to take to start creating Canvas Apps. Detailed information is provided. Now in my scenario, I am connecting to a SharePoint list. It understands I'm trying to create a Canvas app that's connecting to a SharePoint list. So it starts providing the steps. Go to view, go to data sources, create a new connection to SharePoint, plug in the URL of your SharePoint site and connect, which are exactly the steps that are needed to connect to a SharePoint list. So you can use this to learn about Power Apps, not just how to create apps, but also about different formulas within Power Apps. For example, I would like to know what the filter function does. So it starts giving me all the details about the function, the syntax of the function. And it's contextual. It knows I'm asking about SharePoint. So it gives me an example of how it would play out with a SharePoint list as well. Now for my gallery, I would like to search the data in this gallery based on the text that the user enters in the text box. So for that, I simply provide my intent, which is to search data from list based on a text box. And it starts granting me the responses as to how I could potentially perform a search action against a SharePoint list. 
currently it's giving me the formulas based upon a list that it calls out, which is invoices. But my list is called WP tracking list. For a gallery controls items property filter my list where title column starts with text. And here it goes ahead and gives me the formula associated with it. I can go back to my power app, plug that formula in and my text control is called TXT title. I'm just going to replace that. And now in one go, it's gone ahead and applied the starts with filter. So if I search for Dataverse, it will give me the results where the title begins with this text. You can think about this the other way around as well. I would like to know what the specific formula does. So I can simply copy this and specify, explain what this means. And now it's going to start explaining what the specific formula is all about. I also have a drop down control called DRP priority. And I would like to add the selection made in this control as another filter to the gallery. So I will copy this formula and mention to update this formula to add another condition for priority choice column based on a drop down. And I'll plug in the name of that drop down control. Once again, I can simply copy that formula, plug it in here. And now if I filter on priority, it gives me all the items for that selected priority. If I start searching based on the title column, it will give me that information as well. Now when priority is empty, I would still like to show all the items. Once again, natural language, update the formula to show items if priority dropdown is empty. Paste. So now if priority is empty, it shows me all the items. If I make a selection, it will show me those specific items. And the combination filter still works. Now my items property code, there's no commenting. So I will copy the code. I'll say add commands to following formula. And it starts commenting your code on the fly. I'll copy the code, paste the formula back. Now it's that same items formula, but I have code commands that explain each and every step within the specific formula. My label control that shows the due date, I would like to change the color to red if the due date is passed. So I've given it my context. It's going to go ahead and give me the formula related to the conditional formatting. I can copy the code for my label controls color property. I will plug in that formula due date, replace it with this item dot due date. And we can see how it's highlighting those tasks that are overdue. So chat GPT is our friend can help us write formulas, understand formulas, comment our code and a lot more. However, there are scenarios where you need to be careful as well. For example, I have this image control and I would like to make this image rounded. So I'll mention that I need rounded images in power apps. It says use the round function on the width and height properties of the image control. So this formula that it is providing here is not actually relevant in my use case. To create rounded image, all I really needed was to set the border radius of my image control, same as the height and the width. And it will go ahead and set those rounded images. Coming to Power Automate, we have AI features that allow us to create flows simply by describing the flow you want. There are some examples provided for us to get started or we can simply plug in our intent. Maybe my scenario is to start approval for a SharePoint list. An AI grants me a suggested flow. I click next. It will add my connections. 
and go ahead and create my flow. Here, I have a flow that gets items from a SharePoint list, creates a simple HTML table, and sends that out in an email. If I was to simply run this flow, I get an email that shows data coming in from that SharePoint list. Now, if you notice, there's due date, there's price, and it comes in a specific format. And I would like to change the formatting for that. Under expression, we have format data by examples. Here, I can pick my column from my SharePoint list, which is due date. My date comes out in this specific format. I will paste it here. And notice as I type, AI will give me different examples of how I could potentially format this. So I'll pick this as an example and say get the expression and it will go and create that expression for me right in line in the flow maker experience itself. Plus I can test it out. Test this, it gives me the correct output. I'm confident this expression is right for me. I'll click apply, it formats the date. For the price, I will pick the price, put some sample data, and I would like to format it with the dollar symbol. Once again, I'll get the expression. I can test it with different values. Looks good. I will apply. This time when my flow runs, we can see the output are in those specific formats. However, we can also take advantage of chat GPT here. My table doesn't have any style or design to it. I'll mention create style for a professional looking HTML table and it starts generating an example of the CSS. I'll go ahead and copy the code. In my email action, I will add the style tag and paste that CSS style that I copied from ChatGPT. The flow runs and this time the output that I receive has this nicely formatted HTML table. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you so much for watching.